This is Algebra 1, Term 3, Lesson 4. We're going to do three different activities today. The first is some basic practice in GeoGebra. Then we're going to create a system of linear inequalities and identify solutions and non-solutions. And then finally, we'll do our Desmos activity and be introduced to bounded regions. Let's start with GeoGebra. Our first slide looks like this, and these are very basic, but this is good skill practice. So we'll click on here to go out to GeoGebra, and you're given two horizontal lines. So one of these, you will need to graph uh, each of these inequalities, and you will use the shading, and it just says other side, so you'll just turn that on or off depending on how you want to do it. Use the slope to do it and I would encourage them not to use Desmos because a lot of the kids are going to do that. Um, so you might want to come around and say no Desmos. Let's see if we can graph these lines without it. And then maybe before they take their screenshots maybe do all five of these and before they take their screenshots they can go maybe check them in Desmos. So that's one strategy. Uh, something else you might want to point out for one like question number five is when they're in standard form, sometimes it's easiest just to use zero for X or zero for Y, and then you can plot the points instead of putting them in slope intercept form. You could do the same thing on three, except these numbers, not that great. So they may want to come up with a different strategy or use slope intercepts for that particular one. And so there you go. So once they've done that, they're going to come over here to their slides, insert their screenshots, and then they will be done with the GeoGebra. Let's move on to our creating a system. Now this particular task is really good for a portfolio. So uh, the kids create their own system of inequalities. They will create two points or one point that is a solution. Then they will create two points that are not solutions and they'll graph it all together in uh, math.new. So what I've got for you today is a real treat. It's a student that created a video explaining how to do this task. Hey guys, so today I'm going to be demonstrating how to solve a system of inequalities using the Graspable Math Canvas website. So to go ahead and begin, I already have both of my inequalities ready to go. So my first one is going to be 2x plus 3y is less than negative 9. And my second inequality is going to be x minus y is greater than or equal to negative 2. So to go ahead and put these on our plot, all we have to do is find this little white dot next to each inequality and drag it over onto our graph until it lights up and let go. And it's going to graph it on there for us with no typing in necessary. So we're going to go ahead and do that with our second point too, with our second inequality, and let go. And we are already done graphing both of our inequalities. And the next step is going to be plotting our three points onto our graph, and which one of those points is going to be our solution. And our solution point is going to have to be plotted in this darker colored area because that's where the inequalities overlap. So that's where our solution is going to be. So I think I'm going to choose to do negative 3, negative 2. And in order to put that point on the graph, we're going to come over here to our insert button and choose math expression. And we're just going to go ahead and type that in our negative 3, negative 2, and hit done. And again, we're going to find that little white dot where we're going to drag it over and it's going to graph that on there for us. So again, our next point is going to have to be in this lighter shaded area. So I think I'm going to choose to do 2, 1. So again, we're going to come on over and do our math expression. We got our 2, 1. And again, just drag it on over and it'll put it on there for us. So we've got our point A and our point B. So now we're going to plot our point C. And our point C is going to be over here in this white area where there's not really anything going on. And so I think I'm going to do negative 2, 2. Again, go back over and type that in, our negative 2, 2, done, and drag it over, and we've got our point C. So now we have all of our points, we're able to see the difference between them all. We're able to see that A is going to be our solution because it is located in this darker shaded area where the inequalities overlap. 
B is not going to be a solution because it is just in this one section of the inequality in the slider color in the slider color section. And our point C is not going to be a solution either because it's over here all by itself, not really anywhere near the inequalities. So that is going to be it for learning how to solve a system of inequalities. So our last task for the day is Desmos. So we're going to go to the Desmos activity called Bounded Regions, and it looks like this. Now, ironically, most of these screens are not really related to bounded regions. They're actually review. So you may decide to do this first uh, because this first part is a nice little warm up, if you will. Uh, and you may decide to do this last. So you may change the sequence depending on how you want to handle this. But uh, the first part is just the Shira the Sheep activity. It's actually quite cute. So they've given you an equality and if you try it, Shira is going gonna, is gonna to come out here and then she's going to fall in the water and Shira does not like falling in the water. So you'll get something like that. So the kids are supposed to try out different um, inequalities. I'm not going to tell you the solutions or how to do any more than that, but go ahead and, and just let these be the kids. I would not do too much talking in this part. Let them figure this part out. Now when you get to ones like this, you notice the inequality is written in kind of a backward way, so that does sort of impact the solutions. So once they've all done one and two, screens one and two, you may want to have a class discussion on three and talk about the direction that she is moving. Is that going the same direction as this little arrow here? Because some students think that's all you do is look at that arrow and that's where you shade, but that's not true if it's written backwards or if there's negative coefficients. So anyway, have a conversation here, especially if they're struggling. And then we're going to have another one with a negative coefficient. Same issue. So I've got some, there are teacher moves down here and sample responses. So be sure to check those. Uh, these do have sketches. So they're supposed to be sketching down here on this number line. So the shading, you can change it to thicker or thinner and you can change the color of it. They've got it as green, which makes sense because it's grass. But um, yeah. All right, once you get there, you're going to have another one. Now, this one is asking you, what if you plug in a zero? What does that mean? Uh, how could that help Alma decide where the grass is? And then I added this. How could we still make sense of left and right looking at this? And I've got some teacher moves down here to help you with that. Anyway, I'm going to let you read those teacher moves. I don't want to talk too much about that. Uh, and then you're helping Shira solve another inequality. So go ahead and do that here and here. Now, this one is a, it's one of these that has a repeat at the end. So when they type in their answer here, it's going to give them another item, another item, another item. So I guess depending on how much time you need to spend on this, if they need more practice, you could say do three, do five. You could give them a directive or you could just let them do what they want. I usually have them do at least one extra on ones like this, but this that's up to you. I would just know this particular screen seven is not just one exercise. It's actually as many as they like. All right, now here we are finally to the title of this lesson. And this is a, I call this a super rich task because it has so many different concepts embedded. And this is why I like doing bounded regions, because I can use it for a multitude of skills. I even use these in geometry when we're doing all of our polygons, because they can use algebra with their geometry to create graphs uh, using uh, lines. Now that we have Desmos, we have better ways to create polygons, <laughs> and they're going to see that actually in this lesson. But um, it's just a great type of skill, a great a great resource these types of questions for kids all right so what they're doing here is they are creating the four sides of this polygon so they're going to write equations for each one of these lines and they are going to restrict the domain so that it will only draw in that line now, i'm going to do one just so you can see what happens 
uh, the first, let's do the bottom of our trapezoid here. So that would be two. And then I'm going to use a curly bracket and I'm going to say I want my x values to start at one and stop at seven. So I'm going to do one less than or equal to x. And you see how that blue popped in there? Less than or equal to seven. And then I'm going to close my curly brackets and see how it colors in that side of the trapezoid. So that's there as a help. If they were to accidentally put, let's say they put one here, they were looking at the wrong axis or something, they would see that it's off and they could adjust it. So this helps them basically see what they're doing as they're working. And then they're going to write equations here. Encourage them to use transformations for these. Uh, they don't have to have the y-intercept to do these. Some kids will use y-intercepts, uh, but anyway, I'm going to leave that alone. And then we're going to go to the next slide. Now here, a little bit more challenging. Don't have any horizontal or vertical this time, but we just have three sides. So go ahead and create another system and bound the, and restrict the domain. So here again, we're just practicing writing equations of lines, which is a skill they need to be really good at. We're practicing restricting the domain, another skill they need to be really good at. So. Uh, hopefully this will not take too, too long, depending on how well they've done on prior lessons. And now we're going to do a real, a true bounded region. We're going to try to create inequalities and restrict those inequalities so that the shading only falls inside this polygon. And that is not easy. And I will tell you straight out, they do not use all three of these. They don't need them. Um, they do need to restrict the domain. Uh, and they will need to restrict the range. So we've always restricted domains. That's kind of something they're comfortable with. But the range, uh, so you will need to tell the tell Desmos when you're typing this and put it in those curly brackets. What does Y need to do? Y needs to be greater than or less than. Put some extra in there. Now I've given you the sample responses, which is basically one possibility. There's probably, a, I'm sure there's different ways to write these equations, so you don't have to use the same expressions, of course, but any equivalent expression will do. And there may be even different ways to type it. I don't think we can get this one all on the same line, but sometimes you can even get them all together on the same line. And that is true on this next one. Uh, this one seems simple. <laughs> Not at all, not simple. Uh, I would say this will probably take the bulk of your class period. These last two slides I just showed you, they're gonna get stuck probably, but I would just encourage you to not move on too quickly. Uh, let them play with it. Let them see what different things, they learned so much by messing up on these. They learn more than you'll ever tell them. Uh, directly. So let them mess up and see what happens. That's the cool thing about Desmos. When they type something in, they immediately get feedback. They see right away if it's going inside the triangle and how do I get it to stop? What should I try? Uh, I have given some questions that you can ask, but I would hold off on those questions until they've all had lots of opportunity to try many, many different things. So let them play with it do not go to that solution I'm giving you in the sample responses. Uh, don't show it to them, at least not early. Let them play with it and uh, they will learn so much. The longer they're willing to persist in this, is the more they're going to learn. So your goal is to make them as comfortable as possible with this struggle. And then at the end, we, of course, you want to give them some support and feedback. Um, the way I usually handle it is I almost always have a couple of kids that get close or even get the whole thing. I'll have a couple that get close and I'll have them come up and say, what did you type? Okay, explain to me why this works. You know, let them ha talk aloud, give their thinking to the other students. And uh, that's some powerful learning right there. When a kid can articulate what they're thinking and the other kids are glued on to what they're saying because they're like, I don't know, how did he do that? Why does that work? They want to know too. So it's a real good thing to let your kids, maybe a team, you can say team six, I like 
what y'all are doing over there can y'all come share that up here and I'd have them come up in front of the class I would display one or more of their graphs uh, for the class and we talk about it and uh, anyway these are some powerful problems take your time give them plenty of time here this lesson needs to be at least one or two days I would say two days because these last few slides are going to take some time uh, for some of your kids particularly now this last one we're getting even more creative they're going to create their own polygon so you'll notice the order pairs are missing from the polygon so if they hadn't been paying attention the order pairs for the vertices of this triangle were in this polygon here so they will need to create a polygon now I'm not too picky about what they create I'm sure kids are going to create as simple of a polygon as they possibly can and that's absolutely fine but you may have a few that want to really make this special and you would pay, maybe direct them a little bit if you're going to put this in your portfolio try to make it pretty interesting make it exciting make it something challenging so it will showcase what you're capable of um, so that's up to you how you want to handle it but I, they don't need to necessarily share these out because every single student should have a separate a different polygon they shouldn't be copying their teammates they should adjust it to be their very own uh, and again they don't need all these inequalities down at the bottom you may notice that this polygon has three vertices they can add in an extra ordered pair or more than that if they want to create a polygon with more than three sides and that concludes our bounded region assignment now we are about to get to our first term exam for term three I am going to introduce a new idea next class period which is accumulation and we're going to start pretty basic we're going to do some distance time graphs and we're going to do some velocity time graphs and we're going to talk about that a little bit if y'all have any questions about this assignment or need more ideas about how to help them and question students when they're working on these rich tasks and these difficult challenging problems how do you how do you navigate that please talk to me on Twitter I would love to have that conversation don't be afraid to challenge your kids most kids are bored in school and so even a challenge is something out of the ordinary that might just get them excited about the mathematics that you're doing. Y'all have a great day.